Okay, so something has happened this week and genuinely, you are not gonna believe it. And no, it's nothing to do with the title of this video. I actually managed to qualify. Not only that, I got a good lap in. Obviously it happened at Saudi Arabia, it's the one track I can actually qualify at. A tenth off pole, and yes, we did we did bottle it in the final corner. We 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 were on for pole and then I threw it away. And the only thing I was thinking when I was loading into this race was I really hope I can make a video out of this race because I need people to see that I can actually qualify at times. And luckily for me. I can absolutely make a video out of this race. So, Saturday Arabia, my strongest track on this game. P2 on the grid, inside line for turn number one, five lights, and lights out, and away we go. It's a pretty average start. Short run down to turn one, but we're gonna dive the inside of P1, or at least try to. Go on the outside line for turn number two. We're not gonna make that move stick. We're under pressure slightly from P3, side by side of them, but we've got the inside line for the following corner. We should be able to hold on the P2 relatively comfortably. Don't hit the inside wall, do run wide and get an annihilation, but the important thing is we've held on to P2. All we had to do on the opening lap was hold on to P1, stay in DRS, and hopefully for the following lap we can close the gap, save our ERS and attack at the end. Coming through, I need a track map because this track has 50,000 corners. Turn number... I think 17. Come through turn 17, we almost lose the car, almost put it into the barrier immediately. Now we're gonna be under pressure from Taylor. I don't think he's got the speed to overtake us, at least he doesn't have the straight line speed to overtake us just yet. With DRS, that would've been easy work for him. But we're now 1.2 seconds behind P1. That's not what we wanted to do on the opening lap. Luckily for me though, this was a lobby full of people like me. Come through the final corner, Den Dave should have an easy, easy win in the bag here. I'm making mistakes, but through the final corner, I don't even really know what happened to him. But the important thing is, we're now within a second as we come into the first sector. It's an absolutely embarrassing throw of a race lead on the opening lap, which is obviously something you'd never see from me. Having warmed up on lap number one, we were right behind Den Dave at the end of the first sector, the sector you can really attack, and Taylor does not give a fuck about track limits. That's concerning. Um, Let's try and focus on the lead currently. Let's, let's not focus on Taylor. Okay, He's scaring me a bit. Coming on to lap number three, we're right behind Den Dave once again. Still within DRS range, we're gonna try and overtake him on this lap, although we're breaking incredibly early into turn one for some reason. Under pressure from Taylor, or maybe fresh, I'm not really too sure who's behind me at that point. Regardless, we're gonna hold on to P2. Hopefully I can actually get my break and right. I have no idea why I broke that early, but it looks like Den Dave, despite me really trying to throw away this win is not driving the best he can. Despite there being absolutely no chance of me overtaking him, he's going to feel the pressure enough to absolutely throw it away. I don't think I've seen someone crumble under pressure that badly ever. He, he clearly doesn't watch my videos. But the important thing is that bottle from Den Dave puts us in the P1 and we have two and a half laps to hold on to it. And a third of a lap later, we are going to um, lose the lead. Uh, intentionally, there wasn't really much point in me defending this. Taylor's going to take the lead into turn number one, but it means we're going to get DRS in him down the pit straight and attack him down towards turn number one. Sector one is where I feel the quickest, so I want to be leading. I don't want to be stuck in dirty air through sector one. We're going to pull to the outside of turn number one on Taylor. We're going to get the move done long before the corner. It seems like we've got a break and right, but through turn number two, Taylor's gonna get a cutback on us somehow. Fair play to him. We're gonna be side by side, head down towards turn number four. We're gonna use the ERS to pull ahead slightly inside line for a corner that you really can't overtake yet. And we're gonna push him off track, push him wide. Fresh is gonna take P2. We're gonna hold on to P1, Taylor down to P3. And that leaves us with two laps left to defend this lead. Through the remainder of lap four, we didn't use any ERS, saving it for the final lap. Into the final corner for the penultimate time. We've got Fresh as our closest competitor, down towards turn number one. I think I've got the straight line speed on him, especially with DRS. Bollocks. It looks like with the help of ERS, we've got the straight line speed on Fresh. It looks like we're going to be leading into turn number one for the final time. Or not. 
um, Taylor has other ideas for some reason. So I had to think about it and I thought, when, when could I piss off Taylor to, you know, get upset with me? I'm guessing it was the only time he tried to overtake me. So I went into the replay system to have a look and see if the crappy replay system actually caught the, uh, I believe it was the turn four incident. So let's review this, shall we? This is just the move into turn one. It was a pretty straightforward move. There was no chaos at all. He gets the cutback on me through turn number two. Fair enough, he pulls alongside me. At this point, I'm using ERS to get the inside line and just ahead into turn number four. And that is a shocking, and it cuts off. We get a shocking camera angle and it cuts off at the incident. Thanks game, brilliant. Uh, we might as well watch the takeout again. I mean, to be fair to him, it was a decent takeout. He completely missed fresh. He wiped my wing clean off. The only thing he didn't do was make me retire. I mean, all in all, it was a decent effort from him. I mean, he's, he's clearly experienced at being a cut. So obviously the replay system didn't really help us. So I thought, I still want to kind of analyze this incident. So for some reason, I put the time and effort in to go into photo mode and we're going to take a look at that. So this is uh, pre-turn four. You can see I am just alongside him. I have the inside line for a corner that you can't overtake at. I mean, what do you want me to say, Taylor? I then went forward a bit to have a look at the moment that we went through the corner and clearly I'm ahead. I mean, look at all the space Taylor has to run wise. It's not like I push him into a wall. You know what? Might as well just get a thumbnail while I'm here. Might as well. Might just save myself the time. Anyway, after that expert analysis, we've still got a lap to complete. And it's going to be a painful one. We've got absolutely no front wing. We're currently P2. The win is obviously gone. Fresh has taken an easy win, thanks to Taylor. And we've got 3.5 seconds as the gap to P3. I think it's going to be quite difficult to hold on to this P2. Especially how in the space of three corners, that gap is now down to 1.8. To the shock of absolutely no one, P3 did catch on the back of me. Halfway through the lap, I'm still just, just struggling. There's nothing more to it. I mean, I'm gonna try and use ERS. I've, I've got a straight line speed on him. I've got less downforce, obviously. It's actually looking pretty good for me until I hit my nemesis, which is a corner. And there's absolutely nothing I can do. I, I tried to get the cutback on him, but obviously I couldn't really get a cutback with no wing. And we're going to come home in P3 that really, it should have been a win had Taylor not done what he did. It's annoying because that could have been one of the first ranked races where I've actually had a fight for a win and actually won. But in typical F1 ranked fashion, you get taken out. It just kind of happens. You honestly, you kind of become numb to it at some stage. It, it, you just, you don't feel anything. It, it breaks you mentally. Before F1 23, I'd get taken out like that, and I'd be absolutely livid. I got taken out in this race, and I thought this would make a great video. 